Hello friends, welcome back to another session of Core Java Tutorials. Today we will see the need of object oriented programming. We already know how to write programs uh, in a procedural fashion and also include functions in the procedural code. So procedural codes are linear series of programs or linear series of instructions that we give the computer. And including functions means that we can go from one function to another and vice versa. So there are so many limitations that are there in this procedural oriented programming. And we'll see what are those limitations because of which the object oriented programming errors. So the first one is complexity. So I, will, I would like to explain you what does it mean by complexity with an example. So say I have given, uh, I am having two baskets and I am having certain balls in these two baskets. I want you to find out which basket is having maximum number of balls. Say I have given only few, few balls, less than five balls in each of the basket. So it is very easy for you to count because the number of balls are very uh, less even if uh, by just looking at with your eye itself you can make out that uh, one basket is having four or another basket is having three and within fraction of seconds you will be telling me which basket is having the maximum number of balls. And say in the next case I am, I am filling the baskets with the balls and I am asking you to count. Now the problem has increased. I mean I increase the complexity of the problem by increasing the number of balls in the basket. So now what you will be doing is, rather than starting counting, you, you will sit and think on a strategy or methodology how to solve the problem. And then you will come up with certain solutions like maybe you the one way of counting the balls is the linear way, taking each and every ball out of the basket and counting one by one. Or you will be picking them with the multiples of uh, 5 and then counting them. Or you want to put them in a row and column wise and count them. So you will be having different uh, strategies of solving this problem just because the complexity of the problem has increased. Now what is the difficulty with the co programmers like if the complexity of the problem increase? When the complexity of the problem, here I am talking about that the larger and larger the problem is getting into. When the problem gets larger and larger, what happens is the understanding of the program by the uh, programmers become very, uh, uh, will start decreasing. So it is indirectly proportional. If I take, just take these two parameters like the complexity and understanding, if the complexity increases, the understanding of the human beings about the problem decreases. So it is vice versa. So what happens is you at one point of time when the human brain cannot tackle this complexity, we give up. We say that I cannot solve this problem. So you every human brain is like that. And to actually develop uh, good softwares, we need to have complex problems. And if we are giving up in the middle, then this is not going to happen. That's what is happening with the procedural kind of coding. It's a linear series of set of instructions that we give to the computer. So as the problem, as it goes beyond certain limit, limit of human handling, the, the programmer is not able to handle the program and it is becoming very tedious for them to actually continue further and develop new softwares. So what happens over here is there should be a mechanism or there should be a technique or methodology by which we can handle this complexity and yet we can understand it. So that technique or methodology is nothing but object oriented programming. That's how it have evolved to actually tackle larger problems which are very difficult to handle in procedural oriented, object oriented technique has come. Now object oriented programming is an object oriented paradigm wherein there will be all objects, interaction between objects. Any real world thing is considered to be an object in the object oriented paradigm. Say I am a human being. I am a, I, I am a object of a human class and say there is a dog which is an object of dog class. Say there is a bird, parrot which is an object of bird class and each and every 
object can communicate or interact with each other say if a human being can communicate with another human being an object of human class can two objects of human class can communicate an object of the human class can also communicate with an object of the dog class say i can communicate with a pomeranian dog asking it to bring a dog ball for me or sit and stand or jump for me so i can also communicate with a parrot object of a bird class asking it to talk for me or repeat the words after me so the objects all this paradigm has been taken into the programming so programming in object oriented programming is very simple because it's all the real worlds imagine you want to write a program that is for the banking system if you have to write it in procedural oriented then it will be a linear series of set of instructions but if you want to code if you want to write the same uh, uh, write the same banking application in object oriented programming you will be taking a bank object which will be having its own state and behavior and you will be taking a customer who is a human object having its own state that that object having its own state and behavior and you will be ta taking an atm which is again an object which is having its own state and behavior and you will establish the communication between these three objects that's very simple for us or the or the coders to actually do because everything is in real world entity over here and each and every object is having its own uh, uh, predefined set of uh, states and behaviors and this behavior will act upon the uh, states or the uh, data fields of the uh, uh, object so the first reason is like to handle complexity like when the program becomes larger and larger it will be very easy in object oriented programming to handle it second thing is compared to the procedural oriented programming object oriented programming is very simple it is very simple because everything in object oriented programming is a real world entity now the third reason is that object oriented programming gives us better maintainable code legacy codes are the old codes like some 10 years or 20 years of code which we need to maintain it uh daily okay so that maintenance of the code is very easy because it gets compatible with the new softwares and new operating systems very easily so uh, object oriented programming uh, uh codes can be easily or better maintained rather than comparing it with the procedural codes and the next one is like uh, uh you can easily document an object oriented program uh, compared to the procedurally written program and uh, um it's very easy to explain also because everything in object oriented programming is an object and uh, you can represent them by the uml diagrams and explaining the code is also very easy to your team member uh, so what are the reasons for the need of object oriented programming the first one is complexity increase in the complexity second one is simple and the third one is maintainability and the fourth one is easy to document and the fifth one is easy to explain all the reasons why we prefer object oriented programming my friends hope this video is helpful to you stay home stay safe happy learning bye